Today's topic is going to be two special types of metamorphism that don't get anywhere near the amount of credit they deserve. The first is going to be mid-ocean ridge metamorphism. It's a few pages in the textbook, which I'd love for you to look at. It is pages 589 to 592. And the important thing about mid-ocean ridge metamorphism, I guess we should draw a mid-ocean ridge here. Here's our mid-ocean ridge, our spreading center. It's pulling apart. There is this structure to the crust, right, the, the, here, where there are the pillow basalts. I'm trying to draw here in the shallow. The pillow basalts go into an area of sheeted dikes, and then the sheeted dikes give way to a layer of gabbros. And so those are our protoliths, right, in general. But there's a couple other things going on here as well, right? We have the mantle, drawn in green with dots to show all of our olivine. We've got our mantle that can come up to the surface here and maybe interact with water, right? So we know water is going to be a big deal. And then the other thing that we have is sediments. There are carbonate muds and silicic oozes from the death of plankton that fall to the bottom here, right? So that's our stratigraphy and we're just going to give that a partner notes so we're going to call that protoliths. In general, our protoliths are mafic mafix, including basalts and gabbros. But there's other things here as well. We can absolutely have carbonates. There can be cherts. And then lastly, there can be the shallow mantle, so the ultramafic protolith. Now, all of those rocks can be changed by the metamorphism that occurs. And the thing that drives our metamorphism here cannot be pressure, right? We're so shallow. And so it is a temperature type of metasomatism where we have hot seawater. Well, I guess, the, no, 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 no. I hate that. I hate that phrase. We got to do better than that. What we're going to say is that seawater infiltrates fractures. This is our mechanism. Seawater which at first is cold, infiltrates, infil I spelled that wrong, infiltrates fractures. And then it gets heated. And what does it get heated by? Well, it gets heated by the mantle, which here is upwelling, right, and hot. But then also there's magmas that are residing shallowly. So this Water comes down through fractures and gets heated up. And it heats up, it really starts to be highly corrosive. And the word we use for when water that's hot changes rock, that type of metamorphism is called metasomatism. It gets heated. And then what we have is metasomatic alteration. This is hydrothermal alteration that changes the composition of the rocks. This is almost always done at low facies conditions. The rocks that are produced are granoblastic. Remember granoblastic means they do not have a they like have an equal granular texture. There's no evidence for high pressure and why would there be here? This is metasomatic. All right, so there is no foliation that's being produced in these rocks. They tend to have a geographic limitation where they tend to be um, highly heterogeneous. And it follows veins, right? Because those fractures where the fluids are moving, those are where the alteration primarily occurs. And the amount of flow that occurs globally along these mid-ocean ridge systems is humongous. The idea is that there's enough water, there's enough water going through these systems to recycle the world oceans every 5 million years. So we'll just say that, basically just to emphasize that this is a lot of water that, have, that goes through this process. Enough water to recycle world oceans every 5 million years. Wow, that's a lot of water.
and there's a pr big production that occurs with this mid-ocean ridge metamorphism or metasomatism. And really, let's go through the chemical reaction of it here first. The, what we're going to head to, and here's what, okay, so we'll say this. We'll say precious metals, the biggest outcome of all of this is that precious metals are leached from the protoliths and they can get concentrated and later precipitated and later precipitated. This is a big resource for world economy of the future. We just have to figure some stuff out about it. The reaction that occurs is that we're going to take iron bearing silicates, things like our pyroxenes and our olivines, and we're going to add hot water to that. That's going to go to a big chemical change where we're going to produce hematite plus pyrite plus silica. And inside of the hematite and the pyrite, right, sometimes people call these just the sulfides, there gets to be a lot of gold and manganese and silver and other and, and iron and all these other different precious metals that precipitate onto the ocean floor. We see evidence of this reaction at black smokers. Why is that smoke coming out of these things so black? Well, it's not smoke, right? It's, it's actually just hot water that's just loaded with chemicals, right? You've seen this before. It's famous and showed on National Geographic all the time because the the worms and animal life loves the heat and they, they synthesize their life because of all the chemicals and temperature. But of course, this is our geologic resource. And so we're going to put number two here is that, that we get a lot of nodules precipitate on seafloor. I can show you a picture of this actually as well. There's a picture I snagged from Wikipedia just showing the seafloor. And it's not a stunning image by any means, but all of these black nodules are loaded in, in rich concentrations of valuable elements. And if we can figure out a way not to destroy the ocean with pollution, but mine this, then we're going to have a fantastic resource for the future. So that the second topic of today's special metamorphism is serpentinization. We're forming the rock called serpentinite via metamorphism. Serpentinization. We are going to metamorphically produce serpentine. Meta formation of serpentine. The text talks about this metamorphic process on pages 596 to 597. So go ahead and take a look at that. The reaction that occurs is again a metasomatic reaction. Sorry, I zoomed out accidentally. Let's zoom back in. So it's again a metasomatic reaction. with ultramafic, with mantle rocks, with ultramafics. And that's really the key thing here, is that we are, this we're taking peridotite, in fact, let's just put that MG rich peridotite. That is our protolith. The reaction that occurs is olivine, MG2, SiO4 plus hot water, H2O, goes to, well, the mineral formula for serpentine, which is, do any of you know it off the top of your head? Right, of course not. Mg3, Si2O5, OH2. It's hydrous. We're not going to worry about balancing this equation. What does this look like? Oh, we should put this, this should better be A and B. What does this rock look like? Well, serpentinite tends to be massive. It tends to not have a fabric or a foliation too much. It's affinitic, right? very affinitic. And it's composed of serpentine 
plus magnetite. Magnetite makes it have black spots, or serpentine gives it kind of this shades of green mottled color. Yeah, in fact, let's add the word mottled. I like that. Kind of like a snake, right? Serpentine. There are three different polymorphs. Oh, close that. We don't need that. So there's three polymorphs of serpentine. Serpentine, or sorry, polymorph means same chemical formula, but different crystal in structure. Do you remember what those three are? They are lizardite, they are antigorite, and finally, chrysotile. Lizardite and antigorite are really hard to tell apart from one another. They tend to be massive to platy. You could think about them as scaly, right? Because we're dealing with the word serpent. And chrysotile is our fibrous asbestos form. Fibrous or even looks like asbestos. Let me show you some pictures of these. There is a good image. Oh, let's put it down here. Let's just drag this down here. Here's our antigorite and lizardite modeled shades of green example. And then here is our chrysotile example where you can see the fibrous nature. These are both images just straight off Wikipedia. And to wrap this up, let's just talk about the tectonic considerations. How are we getting mantle rocks hydrothermally altered? Tectonic considerations. I wonder if you could argue that serpentinization is the most important metamorphic reaction on Earth. Uh, I don't know, you probably lose that argument, but let me show you why you might be able to make it. There's our mid-ocean ridge system, and it goes down into a subduction zone. Oh, that's a crappy draw. Not that this second attempt's gonna be much better, granted. Okay, here's our ocean and then subduction zone, good. And then we have our overriding plate. There we go, we've got our volcanoes. Well, serpentine actually matters in all of these different environments. It's produced at the mid-ocean ridge system, and it breaks down in the subduction zone system, where it has some big-time effects. Well, let's do a little more here. Four. All right, so let's talk about its formation, first of all. What we have to do is we have to expose mantle should we? Uh, you don't, I don't need to write this in green. But what we need to do is hydration occurs when mantle is exposed at the ocean floor. It does this usually at really slow spreading centers where you don't get much magmatic production and you can just get the mantle there. We talked about that as a hip abyssal. Um, no, 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 what was it? An abyssal peridotite, yes, from a previous lecture, okay? In fact, let's make that connection there. Abyssal peridotite. That's an opportunity. Or just when water travels through fractures down into the mantle. Or, um, so we'll say hydration, water travels to mantle via fractures. A lot of it is made. That's something I want you to know, that there will end up being a lot of serpentinite that starts to enter a subduction zone because it was formed at the mid-ocean ridge. The other very important aspect of serpentinite is that it is incredibly weak. It's very soft, like pronounced cleavage, low Mohs hardness, and it also has, actually let's do it this way, and it has a very low density. As you add so much water to the MG2SiO4, you change its density. Peridotite has a density of 3.3 grams per centimeter cubed, but peridotite is around 2.65. So this is a very low density material. And the result of these two features is that faults take advantage of them. 
faults use them. And so over here in our diagram, number two, we think about this massive fault that's going on at this convergent boundary. Well, the faulting is probably going on in this very weak serpentinite at the interface. It's not going to go through the, the basalts or the gabbro. Instead, it's going to find the serpentinine and use it. The other aspect of it is the low density is that the, the serpentine that starts to come down in the subduction zone wants to come back up the subduction zone. So you end up getting a lot of mixing. Faults use them and there's ends up being kind of this like lubrication type mixing that occurs in the faults because of its low density. And then numbers three and four over here on the side is that Increasing pressure during subduction drives the water away, right? As it goes to a prograde metamorphic pathway. And so you lose water. You lose water to the overlying mantle wedge. That results in plus X magmatism. So serpentine is actually the cause of magmatism at volcanic arcs. So let's say this. Let's say increasing pressure... during subduction drives water from serpentine. Serpentine is the bucket, it's the host of the water for the subduction. It can't be um, oversaid. How much water is it? Well, serpentine is water rich. It ends up being 12 to 14 weight percent water that's being carried by serpentine that then gets released. As it is released, it is the water is then made available. Water made available for plus X magma genesis. Now, of course, it's, it's not just like, it's actually first hydrating the mantle. And then once we hydrate the mantle, we get it to change the slope of the solidus and then cause the melting, right? You remember all that from one of the first lectures of the year. But that is the power of serpentinization. Such an important process for all of plate tectonics.